What do you think about both Soldier Boy and Chris Brown's gang affiliation? I don't think nothing about it. You know, I think I think it's just something that happens in Hollywood, and I think it happened to anybody that goes over to California. You know what I mean? Where that's the culture. You know what I mean? And well, I live in LA, and yeah, it's out there, but it's not like a requirement. <laughs> it ain't like yeah, it's something people want to be down with. But you know, that's a black thing. Like you're not gonna be a Russian crip. Like we're not gonna see Vlad on Grape Street. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I'm not gonna be part of the Russian mob either. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> like I'm, I don't, I don't want to affiliate. In fact, you know, I've had various gang dudes like approach me and you know, oh yo man, you don't need security. See, you're not like, forced to go to hip hop venues either. Yes, I am. Well, I mean, at one point, I mean, I was going to a lot of hip hop venues, point, but yeah. and you're not right now. You might be fucking affiliated to some type of Crips or Bloods if you was. Because what what would happen is that, you know, these dudes that meet you at these venues or whatever the fuck might be. And, you know, what they do to pussy niggas is that, you know, they might be like, run, yo, what's up? Yeah, you know, yeah, the niggas is going to rob you. I just stopped it. Make it seem like they protected you. Right. Well, what's, what's that called? Like, like moving in? Friendly extortion. That's what that's called. It's extortion. Called. Yeah. You know, I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Like, huh? Well, I mean, but this is why. When I was in LA, you, was like, you got to meet the little big ass. <laughs> I mean, nobody, nigga. Fuck right. You talking, I want to meet Allah. Fuck you talking about, bitch, nigga. I mean, nobody. Right. Well, nigga. I mean, but here's the thing. I, I just went, went, when I saw that things could potentially be problematic in LA, I went and got regular security. I went and got an LAPD dude, yeah, you know, who had not, a crew. That's not a part of black culture, especially when you're trying to fuck the same bitches that gangsters is fucking and shit like that. Why would you want to look at you like, yo, you went and got fucking security and these niggas had their homies. Niggas don't want to look like punks in the neighborhood. That's why most motherfuckers die now because they not being they self. I mean, but, but do you see how this is a, a losing cycle right here? Yeah, you see what I'm no, saying? It's a cycle, it's a cycle design cycle. designed for you to lose. Like, like I remember I had just interviewed King Louis. No, Chicago. it's not designed for you to lose. It's a cycle that you decide to get in. Right. And you lose. Right. But but it's a losing cycle. Yes. And if you decide cycle. to jump into this cycle and, and do a few rounds in this Most cycle. Most of these niggas is bitches. I was looking at the little the little Chicago niggas, right? That was writing to me and shit. And the nigga tone in which he wrote. His DM to me was like, so I don't want it. You know what I mean? Like, yo, son. The tone? Hmm? The tone. Oh, like, the tone. In, okay. in the tweet. You know what I mean? I mean, the DM like was like, he really didn't want it. And he just, and then he went back like on his on his feed and like went in like, yeah, fuck that. Fuck. And I was like, it was so sad for me because I was like, wow, yo. This shit really shows you like what goes on in the community where a, a, area, a place where you have to act a certain way because right. you think that's what you need to do to survive when you could easily talk to somebody and be like, yo, my nigga, it ain't like that because that's what the kid really wanted to say. And that's what he was saying. So to see him flip-flop like that, it shows you that he has to do this for the rest of his community so he can keep this facade up yeah. in order because his mind think this is what he has to do to survive. Right, because... Listen, I'm I'm not a street dude. I never claim to be. Mm -hmm. But I deal with a lot of these dudes because I interview them. Mm -hmm. And when we interview, we, we create a rapport. You know, like I genuinely genuinely like some of these dudes who who I fuck with. And they I bring them back multiple times, stuff like that. And I don't want anything bad to happen to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I want these dudes to do well. And, like, for example, I interviewed King Louie. And we was just talking about how, well, you got this whole thing about not snitching, right? So that's the street code that that you you and, and people around you are supposed to follow. So you have a situation where something happens and instead of calling the police, you feel that your your only the, the only thing you could do is retaliate yourself with violence, which if you get caught, you end up getting arrested. Mm -hmm. Even though you may be in the right, even though this person deserved an ass beating or deserved to get shot from in your eyes or whatever else, the law ain't going to see it that way. Mm -hmm. The law is going, okay, you shot this dude. I don't care. what well, he beat up your sister? Oh, well, you shouldn't have shot him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The jury, it is what it is. So it's a cycle designed for you to lose. 
as opposed to someone who comes from a different environment is just going to say, oh, okay, my sister got beat up. I'm going to call the police. We're going to press charges. He's going to go to jail. And I'm okay with that. You see what I'm saying? Whereas it's a cycle to just keep all these people in prison. And like, for example, this is what, this is what kind of bothered me recently was there was this, you know, did you follow what happened with Rico Reckless and Snapdog recently? No. So Rico Reckless, who's from Chicago and Snapdog, who's from Detroit, they've been beefing and so forth. And I've interviewed both of them. Mm-hmm. Well, I interviewed Rico. Snapdog was done by one of my, uh, one of my staff members, but you know, he's, you know, he's friendly with, with Vlad TV. So, you know, we cool with him because of that. And, Rico ended up going to Detroit and, you know, putting up an Instagram video. Oh, here I am in Detroit. You know, they say I can't come here and so forth. The next thing you know, Snapdog is in that same block and they wild it out on camera and stuff like that. And I heard something happen at a club afterwards. A bunch of crazy shit. But they got into a fight. Something happened. <laughs> I'm not going to go into the details of it, but but because Rico wants to, wants to speak on it, I'm going to let him say it. But some some sort of altercation happened afterwards in Detroit, and the first thing I thought of is is Kafani. Kafani was a Bay Area is a Bay Area rapper. He was beefing with this dude named Filthy Rich. Okay, they're both from Oakland. Some shit happened where these pictures came out that was kind of weird looking and they start beefing. So Kafani takes it upon himself to go to Filthy Rich's neighborhood to film a diss video. Mm-hmm. Rich's neighborhood is called the Kill Zone. So that, that already tells you where, where he's going. In the course of trying to film this music video, someone from the neighborhood approaches him and empties the clip on him. Mm-hmm. He gets shot, I don't know how many times, literally dies on the way to the to the ambulance. <laughs> I mean, no, dies on the way to the hospital. They manage to revive him in, in the in the hospital parking lot. Mm-hmm. And he's paralyzed from the from the waist down. Shout out to Filthy Rich. Filthy Rich didn't have anything to do with it. And I and I interviewed uh Filthy Rich. We didn't speak about that part, mm-hmm. but it, it's like I, I don't like to see this type of shit. Like going into someone's neighborhood and you know, mocking them. You know them what and- it is? Is that what it is now? It's the audience. The audience sharing them on. It's the um. It's the white kid upstate New York in his house. You know what I mean? That has a job at Walmart. <laughs> shit, you want to go kill somebody? Yeah. It's the um. The Asian kid in the middle of Lower East Side in his project apartment chanting you on to go kill somebody. Yeah. It's the female that's it's our secretary desk chanting you want to go kill somebody. And these are gangsters, this, or street dudes, whatever you want to call them, that's out there going to try to prove to you that they real, but they're not realizing who they're trying to prove to that they real to. I always tell you, when a nigga don't know who he is, he got to prove it to other people who he is because he gotta, he don't know who he is yet mm. fully. He wants to prove this to the public. A nigga didn't know who he is, don't give a fuck about what them niggas saying. And that's what happens most times because I see shit happen now in hip hop where a dude might not necessarily be talking about somebody, but the crowd would think you talk about him. So now that's what it leads to. And people respond and, yo, first of all, this, that, and the third, and it wasn't meant like that, and that's how I be knowing niggas be weak. You know what I mean? It's such an easy thing for me to tell because I see that what they let the crowd amp them up to do. Can no crowd amp you up, my nigga? Well, not oh, yeah. no real nigga. Yeah, I mean, I sometimes get these crazy phone calls from from rappers who I've interviewed before. They're like, yo, man, I heard that this, that, and the third, and you were saying this, and I'm like, where did I say it? Oh, my man told me. Go to my website. Where is it at? Is it one of my interviews? Do you hear me talking? Oh, my bad. No, but I get these types of phone calls. And if it wasn't me, if it was someone who was hot-headed, I could see how shit could just start spiraling out of control over nothing. Yeah. I could usually calm people down. I could just hang up the phone. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, you know, you could call me when you calm down. I'm not going to let you yell at me on the phone. But... Once you start getting the public involved, when they put the battery in your back, 
things go really left. I mean, because I remember I interviewed Rico Reckless. He said that social media gets more people killed in Chicago than anything else. And then that the social media fucking Chicago up. Oh my God. You want to talk about that social media getting, it, social media get more niggas killed than anything else. It, uh, especially in Chicago, because Chicago niggas dumb. They go, whoa, where you at right now, bitch ass nigga? I'm right here. Niggas pull right up and smoke your ass. <laughs> Fuck no. Yeah, of course. And, 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 I, and I, that's just something I realized when I seen the videos. I was like, this is what y'all do? When y'all beef on people, you immediately load up a video <laughs> and start talking, and you got your gun. Like, I got my gun. Oh, you ain't got as much guns as me. You ain't got sticks. Like, a dude wrote me and was like, he said, Chicago murder rate, crazy. Y'all New York do it to solve. Y'all um, ain't got no sticks. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is that? I was like, what was you doing? Trying to scare people? Like, what do you, I didn't even know what that shit meant. But it showed me that the dudes from out of town got a certain disrespect for New York that they shouldn't have. And it also showed me that this is what dudes do on social media, they try to scare other people. Cause the nigga told me, he was like, I fly out there tomorrow. So I was like, so come. <laughs> you know what I mean? He never, he never flew out. You know what I mean? He never flew out, but it was just like, so come nigga. You know, and it's just weird shit. And then the dudes, you got the dudes in New York that's like cool with the dudes. They don't know how they cool with them. They met them over the internet. Right. They like their raps. They said something to them. The person said something back. So they get cool with them. And then the dudes is like, yeah, well, he good out here with me. And I'm like, you ain't good, nigga. Fuck you mean he good out here with you? Yeah, man. I be sad, man. I cry a lot. You cry I wish a lot. niggas knew how much I cried. Well, I cry so much, my nigga. 